Hello everyone, this is Robert, and I figured it was a good time for an update on the indoor wind chimes project. So back here somewhere, I have the striker mechanism going. This is just kind of a prototype, but I wanted to kind of show you what my thoughts are behind the actual striker mechanism. And then I have some chimes ready to mount up, so we can throw those on there and maybe see how things sound in an initial test. So let's do exactly that. So for anyone not familiar with this project, essentially I'm wanting to build indoor wind chimes. Wind chimes that sit inside but kind of sound the exact same way as if they were outside, so I can use an outdoor weather station to make the chiming. In this video I'm going to be talking about the striker, you know, that thing that dangles down that actually moves around and hits the chimes. For this design, everything is um, ultimately rigid. The chimes are kind of held in place, and so the actual striker mechanism needs to be rigid as well. It can't necessarily just be a string, so that's kind of what I'm dealing with. Let's see what I've come up with. One of the interesting things about this project is the sheer scale and size of it. It's very, very tall, and so it's really difficult to fit on a workbench or really fit anywhere else in the shop. It kind of needs to be mounted but also freestanding. So what I came up with is this spine that I'm mounting to the wall. And this is the only place in the shop that I could mount to the wall and still have access to it. So this is about eight feet tall. You actually can't see the other two feet that are coming up beyond that. And the reason it needs to be so tall is this is the largest chime. It's about as tall as I am. So it's hitting the floor right here and it's, you know, about the same height as me and so it needs to be able to hold six of these and I need to be able to kind of move them around and change things and rearrange and you know prototype and test things out so having this large extrusion this is a 40 by 80 millimeter extrusion mounted on the wall gives me that ability to kind of prototype and play with it a little bit and this won't be the final version this is just kind of for the prototyping so Let's take a closer look at the chime or the striker mechanism and see how that's all mounted up. Here is a closer view of the striker mechanism. And you can see there's a couple 3D printed pieces, a couple dowels, nice and simple. The joint was kind of one of the um, first aha moments that I had. I end up doing this as a magnetic joint. There's just a little screw at the end of that and a ball bearing inside a large magnet and that just kind of snaps on and it gives me a lot of freedom and a lot of travel on this without having any kind of mechanical joints. This thing needs to swing around a lot and some kind of mechanical universal joint I uh, really wasn't uh, super thrilled with so I think the magnet is a nice solution for that and it holds it just fine no problem. We also have some wires coming off of this more on that later. The interesting thing that I learned about this was the original design which is right here, was just a single fixed piece that would just kind of clip into the rail. But what I learned was that walls are not level, and I you know, obviously knew this, but this wall kind of leans forward a little bit, which means that at the bottom, this is in the wrong spot. So I had to make this adjustable with this dowel. This quite simply just slides in and out, and there's a little set screw at the top where you can dial it in. But Something I learned from doing this prototyping is you have to assume that this spine is not going to be perfectly level or the wall is not going to be perfectly level, so you need to have some adjustment. So that's what the top looks like, and it moves nice and freely and has the wires. So let's uh, take a look at the bottom side. So here is what the bottom looks like. As you can see, we have an electromagnet mounted inside this little pod right here. If I take this off, there's an electromagnet in the bottom side of this, and then I have this little TPU 3D printed striker. And all of this is just kind of prototyping, playing around. Um, this one is also just kind of slid in there so I can easily adjust it up and down. And there is a microcontroller that I'll show you in a bit that is just pulsing both of these electromagnets, and that is what's creating the motion. It's kind of on a random pattern right now. The code is not um, finished by any means, and this is just kind of for testing, so it looks kind of funky. One thing I learned, why two electromagnets? Well, great question. Originally, this one just had a magnet on the bottom of it, and it would just simply oppose the electromagnet. Well, the problem is, is when this is not pulsing, it would just 
stick in place because this is metal. So it would always want to be retracted and it would very rarely repel in the right way. So when this is off and not pulsing, I need it to just return to the middle, hence having two electromagnets opposing each other. And that's kind of how that works. But we can just kind of move this down a little bit lower. And you can see we can simulate, you know, some sort of striker motion. I still need to dial this in quite a bit, but that's how this will work. And here's what I've got for the electronics. I quite simply just have an Arduino with a motor shield on it, and we're driving two motors, the top and the bottom electromagnet, and then I'm just hooking this up to a 12 volt power supply. I can go a little bit higher with the power supply and get a lot more motion out of it, but I think this is plenty for right now. And that's really all there is to it. The code can be done a lot of different ways, but what I'm thinking right now is you're basically engaging the electromagnet, right? You're turning on and then off. There is a time delay between when that is on and the next time it pulses. So what I'm going to do is take that time, that delay in between each pulse and map it to the average wind speed, how windy it is over the last like five minutes. Then you also have the strength of the pulse, hence using a motor driver. The strength of the pulse will be then mapped to the instantaneous wind speed. So if you have one gust of wind on an otherwise pretty calm day, you will get a relatively strong pulse, but there'll be a long time frame in between those pulses. And conversely, if you have a lot of wind over a, or I guess a lot of gusts on a very windy day, you'll get a lot of strong pulses and a lot of high frequency pulses. So that's the idea anyway. But yeah, pretty simple electronics. And um, yeah, let's, I guess, move on to the chimes. So over here on the CNC, I have four of the six chimes with their mounting arms already on them. I need to mount up the other two, and then we can throw this onto the spine and see if it makes any sound. I'm not really sure with the current programming what it's gonna sound like, but this will be the first time ever actually hearing these chimes do their thing. So let's get everything hooked up and see if it even makes any sound. The two largest chimes needed to be attached to the little mounting arms. And here's what the process looks like. You basically have a rubber band that kind of goes through the middle. You have these two little pegs. These are going to be metal dowel pins, but I just 3D printed them for this. And then they just kind of snap into these little recesses in the arm. So it's pretty simple as that. All these pieces are 3D printed right now. We'll see what the final ones end up being, but that is the process for mounting the last two chimes. So now it's time to put them onto the main spine. And this is actually pretty easy because the arms are designed so they just kind of snap in place. You can screw into a um, nut that is on the spine, but for right now, I'm just gonna kind of snap them in place. The weight of the chime themselves kind of presses against everything and holds them in place. And, and maybe they'll fall over time, but they can just kind of be snapped into place. There is a bit of an order to these. Um, the longest one is on the right closest. Um, I want obviously the heaviest ones with the least amount of cantilever off of the spine. So one, three, and five are on the right hand side and two, four, and six are on the left hand side. And I think that kind of gives the most pleasing arrangement. Also, you want to make sure that the bottoms of them are lined up closely as possible because you want to strike them ideally as far down on the bottom as possible. So the bottoms are kind of lined up, but then the tops are just kind of free form and this arrangement kind of looks best in my opinion. Okay, so I have all of the chimes mounted up. Everything should be good to go. I just need to power it on. I need to swap some of the arms as you saw, but um, yeah, everything looks good to go. It looks pretty cool. It's about eight feet tall overall. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so it's doing something. Um, it's a lot quieter than I thought, which is good because I can always make it a lot louder. And it's not as random as I would like. I think the striker is too big. There's only like half an inch in between each movement. So it doesn't get chance to really like swing around and bounce off of any of the others. It kind of only hits one at a time, but 
proof of concept. I think it's working. Um, I just need to change the size of the striker, maybe space out the chimes. This is going to take a little bit of um, guessing and checking to kind of figure out, but it makes some sound. Um, I'm going to leave the video at this. So thanks for watching. Um, check out any new videos I got on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of set the uh, mic down next to this, zoom in, and you can just kind of listen to this for a couple minutes. So as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.